June by Frank Herbert, 1965. Thank you for joining me for What Made 40K, where I look at classic science fiction novels that have influenced the background and history of the Warhammer 40,000 universe. Seen by many as the greatest science fiction work of all time, Frank Herbert's most famous novel tells an intricate story of fate, empire and ecology set around the harsh desert planet of Arrakis, also known by the title of the book, Dune. In this video we will start by exploring the key narrative elements and themes of the novel before outlining background comparisons from the lore of the 41st millennium. Winner of both the Hugo and Nebula Science Fiction Writing Awards, Dune is an epic novel in which the author not only created a convincing universe, but an entire planetary ecology for his characters to occupy. Not only was this natural history compelling in its own right, but it also played a key role in the unfolding tale of Machiavellian plots and political intrigue. Focused on the tale of young Paul Atreides, Dune is set in an intergalactic feudal empire where the most precious commodity is a spice melange, a geriatric drug whose consumption extends life and makes hyperspace travel possible. This star-spanning civilization exists in a distant future where the capabilities of the human consciousness is venerated and technology is viewed with suspicion. Indeed, the Orange Catholic Bible, the principal book of a unified human religion, states thus, Thou shalt not make a machine in the likeness of a human mind. The development, manufacture or ownership of any form of artificial intelligence is strictly prohibited and a capital crime of the gravest order. The outlawing of AI has had a profound effect on human civilization, which has existed in a state of technological stagnation for millennia. However, this credo is not some blind dogma of control, but a bitter lesson learnt through the deaths of untold billions in the Butlerain Jihad. In this ancient conflict, humanity fought for its very survival against the thinking machines it had created as its servants, automaton who then turned against their master and creators in a war of annihilation. Only a few cultures, such as Ix and Raishis, now develop and build far future technologies, but they are closely watched to ensure they do not transgress the teachings of the OC Bible and engage in activities that may disfigure the human soul. In this strange, post-AI society, humans have developed their abilities, bodies and minds to fulfil the highest order functions of science, politics and war. The need for people of superhuman capabilities is fulfilled through the training of individuals in specialised schools, orders and cults. Mentats are cogitator savants whose sapho juice enhanced minds combine supercomputer processing power with human experience and judgment. The Bene Gesserit is an all-female order of adepts, peerless warriors who respected and feared in equal measure. But perhaps their most extraordinary ability is telepathy, a trait that makes them much sought after as truthsayers to the dukes and barons of the great houses. Most extreme of all, is the Navigator's Guild whose huge highliners are the only means of conducting interstellar transport, therefore allowing the vast expanse of human civilization to survive. Saturated in the spice melange, the Navigators themselves have the ability to guide spacecraft between the stars, travelling without moving, or folding space as it is known. This consumption of vast quantities of spice has significant side effects, and the most advanced Navigators are no longer physically recognisable as human. Ritualistic forms of combat, strict conventions of war and readily available personal shielding technology has led armies to have melee focused fighting styles. The skill of the warrior with sword and knife are paramount and ranged weapons, while still carried, are far less significant than the futuristic setting would first suggest. It is this focus on hand-to-hand -hand combat that has led to the deadliest warriors of the Imperium the Sadakar, to be drawn from the savage prison planet of Solsa Secundus, where the hard brutality of mere existence makes its hapless inhabitants perfectly savage recruiting material for the Emperor's dread legions. Harsh worlds make for hard fighters, 
and no environment imposes a tougher existence on its peoples than the deserts of Arrakis, where the nomadic and secretive Fremen have been honed by the desolate expanse of sand into a warrior society whose fighting prowess exceeds even that of the Imperium's finest troops. Their desert power is further enhanced by their affinity to, and harnessing of, the giant sandworms of Dune, Shai Halud. It is not just the training and conditioning of the orders and schools that has allowed humans to transcend to higher states of capability. The spice melange, found only on Arrakis, is consumed by the wealthy and powerful to extend their lives. To a select few, however, it serves a deeper purpose, expanding the consciousness of those who are able to survive and master its effects. The Sappho juice consumed by the Mentats is derived from the spice, this red liquid allowing them to unlock their full potential as biological computers of amazing speed and profound logic. For the Bene Gesserit, their most senior members undergo the ritual to drink the Water of Life, a spice poison extracted from an infant sandworm drowned in water. Those who are able to imbibe this awareness narcotic and survive undergo a powerful mental awakening, becoming telepathic, that is to look into, read, and even influence the mind of others. The guild navigators, who consume huge quantities of the spice, achieve a different transcendence, gaining limited prescience, the ability to see into the future, and it is this unique gift of foresight that enables them to navigate through hyperspace and travel between the stars. All three of these special groups have abilities that are vital to the functioning of the Imperium, with the Padishah Emperor Shaddam IV maintaining the balance of power between the great houses of Valansrad, granting Chome directorships and the attendant wealth to the noble families, playing one off against the other by exploiting their character and rivalries. Each great house is kept in check by their peers, and they also know that a move against the Emperor will be met with a swift and brutal suppression at the hands of his Sadukar. While the Bene Gesserit and the Guild may appear as benevolent actors in this galactic power play, hidden motives exist for both. The Sisterhood secretly manipulate noble bloodlines to their own ends, a subterfuge spanning thousands of years to create the Kwisatz Haderach, a super-being through which they hope to control the Empire. The Navigators will take any and all steps to protect their monopoly on space travel and the enormous supply of melange this demands. Finally, the Emperor and the Great Houses are in a state of delicate coexistence, constantly looking to leverage advantage and enhance their own status and power. A wary Imperial watch is kept on the Bene Gesserit, while the Guild are flattered at every turn, for without their fleets, Shaddam's power would be for naught. The influence of Dune is writ large on the Warhammer 40,000 universe, with several plot themes being directly descended from the novel. The Imperium of Man, a vast, galaxy-spanning civilization, is organized along feudal lines, with all compliant worlds being bound to pay the Imperial tithe. This tribute is not typically in the form of hard currency, weapons, or commodities, but a levy of human capital to feed the Emperor's colossal armies in the endless struggle against the many and varied enemies of man. Travel between the stars is made possible by human mutants known as navigators, who are able to guide void ships through the perilous alternate dimension of the warp. The Imperium's prohibition of self-aware machines, ironically referred to by the acronym AI, or abominable intelligence, uses the theme of an ancient war against machine servants that turned on their human masters. This war against the so-called Men of Iron was a cataclysm which led to the collapse of humanity's greatest ever civilization. It was not until the coming of the Emperor and the rise of the Imperium of Man that a fraction of such greatness was achieved again, but this was done without the aid of the thinking machines which were forever outlawed. Characters and warriors also draw clear roots back to Dune. The space marines of the Adeptus Astartes, the finest warriors of the Imperium, are genetically enhanced and conditioned to be superhuman warriors. Their prowess is no doubt raised further, as most candidates are drawn from brutal beginnings with warrior savages of feral worlds and underhive ganger scum being seen as ideal reservoirs for new initiates to join the chapters. Sisters of Silence are an elite order of warrior women who scour the Imperium searching for emergent psychers. 
Never uttering a word, they communicate via secret sign languages and are highly skilled warriors in their own right. The Officio Assassinorium's assassins are living weapons, humans selected and trained to perfection so they can execute the will of the Administorum. Technology is guarded and controlled by the Adeptus Mechanicus, originally known as the Mechanicum, engine seers who have turned the study of technology into a mystical cult whose adherents sometimes stray close to, and may even break, the prohibitions of developing machine sentiences. These are but a few of the many powerful officers and cults of the Imperium, and while all are nominally loyal to the Emperor, they often pursue divergent aims, sometimes even coming into direct conflict with one another. Much like the relationship with the Spice of Arrakis, some humans are experiencing a metaphysical awakening, although here in the form of a protracted evolution into a psychic species. Many humans are born warp-sensitive, and if not controlled, their expanded consciousness and connection to the warp represents an existential threat to civilization. That is to know that every errant individual is a potential conduit into real space for the malevolent entities of the warp. Only the eternal vigilance of the Sisters of Silence and the Black Ship fleets protect humanity from the ever-present menace these unwitting souls present. These emergent psychers may yet serve vital roles essential to the Imperium's survival, but harsh testing, years of training and often brutal conditioning are required. This ensures that only the very strongest serve and have, as much as is practicable, the strength to resist the perils of the warp. A particularly demanding change is endured by the astropaths, human telepaths who can instantaneously communicate across the stars. Those that are deemed strong enough are subjected to soul binding by the Emperor himself, an agonizing process by which their minds are reshaped to be like fortresses to the intrusions of the Immaterium. Not all will survive this process, and even those who do are rendered blind by the awesome power of humanity's most powerful psyche. There is another very strong theme from the Dune universe that influences the story of the Imperium of Man. The concept of the timeless God Emperor, but this came from Herbert's fourth book of the series, God Emperor of Dune, published in 1981, and this is a story for another episode. Without a doubt, Dune has heavily influenced the background of the Imperium of Mankind. Frank Herbert's universe is present in the fundamental structure of the Imperium and many of its organisations. His ideas of futuristic warfare and the dangers of machine sentience are clear to see. Most prominently of all is the concept that mankind must condition and even alter itself to fulfil esoteric specialisations that will be fundamental to the existence and functioning of a star-spanning galactic empire. Every fan of Warhammer 40,000 should read this classic of science fiction writing. Thank you very much for listening, and goodbye.